During Kennedy's 1960 campaign, he launched an ideological war against communism. Communist influence has penetrated into Asia. It stands in the Middle East and now festers some 90 miles off the coast of Florida. Let all our neighbors know that we shall join with them to oppose aggression or subversion anywhere in the Americas. And let every other power know that this hemisphere intends to remain the master of its own house. Cuba in particular was a festering thorn in his side. Castro and his fellow dictators may rule nations, they do not rule people. John Kennedy had a kind of a fixation about Castro, an obsession maybe is a better word. He couldn't abide the fact that this cocky, arrogant uh, young man was in charge of Cuba just a few miles off our shore and willing to defy uh, the great United States. After Castro seized power, he was hailed first as a conquering hero, then branded a communist turncoat. Watergate burglar Frank Sturgis fought side by side with Castro, while secretly acting as a CIA informant. He was among the first to discover Castro's true colors. A Russian submarine uh, one evening came off the coast of uh, Cuba, uh, in Oriente province, and unloaded a couple KGB agents. I did take pictures of these two individuals after I took the pictures of the communist, uh, these two agents and so forth, when I found out definitely that he was dealing with the communists and with the KGB. And I definitely uh, really, really wanted to go ahead and, uh, and uh, do something to kill him. After early attempts to kill Castro failed, the CIA turned to more devious methods. Enter Marita Lorenz, Fidel Castro's mistress. By chance, I went on my father's cruise ship, the Berlin. The last stop on this cruise, West Indian cruise, was Havana. And on this cruise, I met the Prime Minister of Cuba, Dr. Fidel Castro Ruz. She was 19 years old and a real beauty. Fidel, naturally, with a 19-year-old girl, hey, you know, he'd, he'd crawl over a snake to get to a 19-year-old girl. At 19, she was old enough to have an affair with Fidel and young enough to be brainwashed by the CIA. I was asked to try to recruit her because she would be a very good asset, intelligence-wise. And I nurtured her along, and I finally did, where I got her in a position to poison Castro. They kept threatening me since they trained me that I wasn't good for anything else, that I had to do it for national security reasons, that otherwise there would be a war. She failed in that, and then there was two other attempts. I saw him uh, playing his music and lying on the bed, smoking a cigar. He said, did you come to kill me? And I said, yes. And he said, you can't kill me, nobody can kill me. Though the CIA had been unable to liquidate Castro, they pushed ahead with plans for an all-out invasion. The Bay of Pigs was the disastrous result. Jack Kennedy did inherit the Bay of Pigs uh, scenario. Uh, he had made certain pledges during the campaign. He had chided Nixon for not being tough enough on Castro, and he was determined to show that he was a tough guy that wasn't going to tolerate this dictator 90 miles offshore. Promises had been made by the administration, by the Kennedy administration, and by the preceding Eisenhower administration that the invasion would proceed under certain circumstances. And uh, when the, that vow was broken, uh, I only interpreted it on the part of Mr. Kennedy as a, a failure of nerve. He was scared because Khrushchev says, don't do this or we're going to do that. You know, so he didn't do it and he deserted the Bay of Pigs. I was involved in the Bay of Pigs. Got a lot of people, who were friends of mine, that were killed in the Bay of Pigs. And I resent that. Don't play political games with me. I'm a military man. I'm a soldier. I go fight. But damn it, if I risk my ass out there and I'm getting shot at, I don't want some stupid ass politician to go ahead and make deals behind my back where my people or maybe myself are going to get killed. I don't like that. After the Bay of Pigs, John F. Kennedy angrily said that he was going to break the CIA into a thousand pieces. I'd like you to respond to that. 
I think that uh, for him to have said that was uh, uh, probably a way of disguising from himself the fact that he himself was responsible for the fiasco with the Bay of Pigs. And I'm sure that that's something that haunted him for the rest of his days.